are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And today we have a special guest today. We're going to be talking about a special topic. So if you're in pain, you really want to listen to this episode. It's based on her new book, our guest, Dr. Andrea Furlan, and her book, Eight Steps to Conquer Chronic Pain, A Doctor's Guide to Lifelong Relief. It is something that you want to check out. And she also has an amazing YouTube channel that is over 40 million views on there. So you know there's a lot of people tuning in to what she has to say and what she has to offer. But we're going to learn a little bit about, more about her as a person. So, Dr. Ferlin, how are you doing today? I'm very good. Thank you for inviting me to be talking to you and your audience today. Well, I appreciate you taking time because I know you're busy. Because anyone who has 40 million views on their YouTube channel, they've been busy working a lot. And also your amazing book. Before we dive into all that, let's first talk about you as a person how did you uh, come about wanting to become a doctor and what became your mission? <laughs> yeah. So I graduated from medical school 30 years ago. I did my medical school in Brazil. And for the last uh, 27 years, I've been in Canada. And um, I practiced medicine in a pain clinic in Toronto, Canada. And I became interested in medicine first uh, when I was in my high school years, because uh, I was always suffering from menstrual cramps every month, and those were very debilitating. I had to miss important events and school and exams, and I wanted to help people. And then when I was in medical school, I found the specialty of physical medicine rehabilitation or physiatry, and um, I found that physiatry is a specialty that we we treat people with physical disabilities. And I find that chronic pain is a kind of an invisible disability. And uh, that's how I specialize in treating people with chronic pain to help them regain function, to live a full life with quality of life despite having chronic pain. And with that said, that kind of brings us directly to your, your awesome book, Eight Steps to Conquer Chronic Pain, A Doctor's Guide to Long, Lifelong Relief. With this approach, can you explain to the mm -hmm. audience a little bit about, is this a holistic approach? And if so, mm -hmm. what are some of the scientific uh, methods that you present in your book to back this up? Yes. Yeah, so I, I put the messages that I repeat to all of my patients in the book. So the book is basically what I keep repeating to my patients when they come to see me. And the book is an organized matter because it forced me to organize my thoughts. And it was really helpful after I had the YouTube channel. I opened the YouTube channel in 2019. And during the pandemic, it really exploded because a lot of people were in lockdowns and uh, they couldn't even get treatments. And now I have so many videos on my channel, more than 150, I think, and I organize all these messages of my channel, in the book, and everything that I want patients to know. So it is an holistic approach. Um, as I said, I've been practicing medicine for 30 years. And the way that I organize these eight steps is it makes sense uh, from a lifestyle perspective. It makes sense to take uh, self-management. That's what we call self-management is when... People have to take care of themselves. And um, I, I think it is because chronic pain is a chronic disease. Many times it doesn't go away. So I, I compare conquering chronic pain to conquering a mountain. That's why the cover of the book shows many mountains. And the mountain will be there, will always be there. But uh, the, the thing is, you can conquer your mountain and uh, still have pain, but you can live well having that, um, that pain. You can still live well with your pain it's despite uh, having the chronic pain. <laughs> and inside the book, you go with each step. So step one is retrain your pain system. 
explain a little bit uh, to the audience what that means and how they can mm-hmm. kind of get a teaser and yeah. understand what that step one is. Yes, of course. Um, so let me back up a little bit before I explain how to retrain the pain system. Let me explain what is the pain system first. I, I compare the pain system to an alarm system of a house in the book. So in, in, even before the first step, I explain what is pain, what is chronic pain. So if you have an alarm system of a house you install because you want it to go off to make a lot of noise when there is something wrong, right? There is a smoke, a fire, a burglar, a leak in the basement, and you want it to make noise. And then you call the ambulance, the fire truck, or the police. Well, in our body, we also have this alarm system. It's called our pain system. So we have sensors for pain all over our body, mostly in the skin. We don't have a lot of sensors in our organs like heart and and muscles. They are more rare, but the skin is very innervated for sensors of danger. And so these sensors are there to detect danger, an infection, inflammation, a cut, a burn, a disease. And uh, so this is acute pain. So if a person has a toothache, it means that there is an inflammation in the tooth and uh, they have to, you know, go see the dentist. And um, once the dentist remove that tooth or treat that uh, tooth, then the pain will go away. So that means you call the fire truck, they came, they saw where the fire was, they extinguished the fire and the, the alarm goes on silence. Now imagine that this alarm system of your house is malfunctioning. And it's going off all the time. There is no fire. There is no burglar. Nothing invade. No danger in the house, but the alarm is still going on and you know making a lot of noise. Not only that, but it's constant all the time, twenty four hours, and very loud. You can't concentrate. You can't live in a house like that, right? You can't work. You can't live. You can't sleep. That's what happens with people with chronic pain. Their pain system is sensitized, so they are living in this body that is giving them these messages of pain. I'm not saying that they're faking. It's not. The pain is quite real and it's quite loud and it's constant. And they can't concentrate. They can't. Sometimes it's hard for them to work. It's hard for them to do, to sleep. Their mood is low because who can live in a body like that? So that's chronic pain in most of the times. We know that this is called central sensitization. I didn't invent this. This is about, you know, 40 years of research showing that this is what happens in the brain, the spinal cord, in the nerves, in the pain system. Even the immunological system is involved. The hormones are involved. An example is fibromyalgia. So I don't know if you heard about fibromyalgia. It's a chronic pain that is constant everywhere. hurts. Uh, all the body parts hurt. And the person really has low mood, low concentration, problem to sleep. They are fatigued during the day. So going back to your original question, I'm sorry for the loop that I had to to, to explain. But um, so then when we diagnose that the pain system is malfunctioning and we detect that the problem is actually in the alarm system, not that the alarm system is going off because there is a smoke or fire, we need to fix this pain system. And so that's what a brain retraining is. And we do this by... With exercises for the body and exercise for the mind, there is no other way. We don't have pills. We don't have drugs. We don't have injections to retrain the pain system. This has to be done by teaching the pain system what is normal pain again, that they can actually move, they can actually do things and tell their brain, I'm safe. I'm not in danger. This is actually, I can actually move the the part that is hurting and so there, there are a lot of uh, processes that we do this. It's not that simple, but um, it, it requires daily activities. Sometimes they have to journal what they are feeling because emotions play a big role, which brings me to the second step. The second step of the eight steps is how are your emotions? Because emotions play a big role in this malfunctioning of the pain system. Once again, let's on Refocus the Radio talking to our guest today, Dr. Andrea Furlan, and we're talking about her book, Eight Steps to Conquer Chronic Pain. And yes, yeah, speaking of uh, step two, when it comes to controlling your emotions, you yourself, 
over the years been dealing with your own patients and teaching them how um, they can diagnose these uh, certain types of pain. So what are some different types of pain and how can someone who's listening to this kind of be on the lookout and say, okay, I can kind of point this out here and point that out there and have a better way to talk to my personal doctor. Yeah, yeah. So the first, um, the first thing is don't try to diagnose yourself. It's hard even for us medical doctors to make the diagnosis of pain, what kind of pain they have. So get a good medical doctor or a nurse practitioner, physiotherapist, someone who understands this. But the types of pain basically they fall into three categories, nociceptive, neuropathic, and nociplastic. I'm sorry, I don't have better lay terms. <laughs> I, I'm just repeating here what the science uh, teaches us. So nociceptive pain is that pain that uh, the alarm system is functioning normally and the person has a, let's say, a burn in their skin. So, or a toothache or an appendicitis, something that you can see that is inflamed, damaged, or diseased. You go there, you remove that insult or disease, and the pain goes away. So that's not susceptive. And we treat this with, you know, uh, analgesics, anti-inflammatories, applying ice, some massage, those kind of things. The second type of pain is neuropathic pain. And examples of neuropathic pain can be shingles, posherpetic neuralgia, trigeminal neuralgia, or people who have diabetes and they have the, the sensors, this, the nerves in their feet and hands are damaged by diabetes and now they have this tingling and burning their feet. Or ex other examples of neuropathic pain are pain after spinal cord injury, or after a stroke or multiple sclerosis. So this means that the nerves, the pathways that carry the information of pain are damaged. And we can, you know, we know where the, the disease is. Yeah, like if the person has multiple sclerosis, we know exactly where is the problem. And uh, we treat this as nerve pain. So nerve pain, we treat with different methods. We use antidepressant medications, anticonvulsant medications, we can use some mind-body therapies to calm down the nerve system. But the treatments are different because anti-inflammatories usually do not work for nerve pain. And the third type of pain, nociplastic pain, is that kind of pain that the pain system is malfunctioning and we need to regulate the pain system. And um, that's when the nociceptive or neuropathic pain, the first two, have resolved they are gone, the body has healed, but now there is that sensitization. So we need to remove, desensitize the pain system. And we do this with mind exercises, body exercises, a lot of, uh, and a lot of times the emotions are perpetuating that pain. What I mean by emotions is some things that the person believe. For example, if a person has a tendency to be negative, to have fear of things like fear of pain, they have fear of movement, they always think the worst of a situation. We call this catastrophizing. They catastrophize, they, they make a catastrophe out of everything that happens in their life. We know that those kind of thinking make pain worse. We know that that kind of emotion makes this alarm system more sensitized. So there are ways that the psychologists, mental health providers, counselors, they can use with talk therapy to help the person see differently. And that actually works. We can see this even with brain imaging. We can see that the brain kind of uh, works differently when the person is thinking differently. So that is the emotion. They come together. The brain retraining and controlling your emotions is step one and two. They kind of come together. And with that, um, we won't go through all the steps because we want to make sure people definitely read this book for um, for themselves. But step number three is all about the quality of sleep. So mm -hmm. you as a doctor, I mean, how many times have you had to deal with patients who just 
they don't get enough good quality sleep and how much does that really affect a person's mm-hmm. health? Yeah, very common. Sleep problems is very common among people with chronic pain. And my patients, they tell me that, ah, doctor, I'm not sleeping well because I have pain. I wake up in pain and the pain is not allowing me to have a good night of sleep. Well, that can be true, but a lot of times is that they don't have a good sleep hygiene. They don't have a good sleep routine. Their sleep is, you know, a mess. Therefore, they have a very superficial sleep because, they, for example, if a person is taking a long nap in the afternoon, then the quality of sleep at night will be very poor. They will sleep very light. They will, you know, have difficulty to go to the deep sleep at night. So if you are sleeping very slightly in the at night, anything will wake you up. And then a little bit of pain wakes them up. So you you see how one thing feeds the other and they think it's the pain that is waking them up. So once we help them to regulate their sleep, once we help them to understand, take these steps seriously, take care of your sleep, do all of these things. And I tell in the book about 10 things that they can do to have a much better sleep quality. One of them is don't take long naps in during the day. Their sleep is so much better. They, They are sleeping deeper, deeper, deeper. And then they, their pain doesn't wake them up so often. And they come back and they say, well, I actually, my, my pain is better at night. I say, no, actually your sleep is better, <laughs> but, um, it's fun. A lot of people really neglect, uh, quality of sleep, especially those days. I don't know what's happening. People are busy. They are, you know, watching, you know, computers and TV and putting a lot of blue light in their eyes, which activate their brain. So there are a lot of things people can do to have a good night's sleep. We talked to Dr. Andrea Fuller and her book, A Steps to Conquer Chronic Pain, A Doctor's Guide to Lifelong Relief. And the reason why I, I think people have a hard time with sleep is just what you alluded to earlier. They just find themselves all over the place. It's always a good excuse. Well, I'm too busy. Well, I'm tired. Well, I'm hungry. Or this yeah. is going on. I want to watch this. You as a doctor, what some of the things that you um, gave as far as advising your, your patients, how they can mm-hmm. structure a, a better routine, even though they yeah. have a busy lifestyle? This is so important. Um, this is very important. But also, I like to say, some of my patients, they... They just stop doing everything and they are not busy the way they were before and they continue having pain. Like they stop working, they lock themselves in their bedroom, they don't have any social life anymore, they don't even want to meet with their family sometimes. And they tell me, I'm not so busy anymore and why am I having pain? Well, busyness mean that your brain is focusing on things that are probably, you know, even when you are not busy doing things, your brain is always thinking, right? And if your brain is busy thinking about pain itself, that is very dangerous. I tell my patients, so what do you do the whole day? If you're not working, you're not socializing, you're not doing anything for yourself, what do you do the whole day? You know what they do? They think about pain the whole day. Wow. And so I say you are just creating memories of pain in your brain because the more you think about something, the better you get at that. The more you practice piano, the better you get at playing piano. The more you practice a language, the better you get at speaking and understanding that language. So the more you think about pain, the more you're creating synapses in your brain that are just reinforcing the memories of pain. So a little bit of being busy with life is good. I tell my people, if they are too busy, stressed out, trying to do, you know, 36 hours of work in a 24-hour day, it's not going to work. You have to slow down. But the opposite is also true. People who spend the whole day doing nothing, you need to get busy. You need to get out. You need to distract your brain away from the pain. So actually, the balance is the best way. Balance your life with activities that you enjoy, get a hobby, volunteer, help someone, find someone who needs care, who needs love, who needs a little bit of attention. 
distract your brain away from pain. Now, if you are overworking and doing too much and trying to fit uh, too much in your life, slow down, take care, and we in practice self-love. Self-love means pay attention to your emotions, do your exercises, write a journal about what is working in your life, your diet. One of my steps in my book is about nutrition. People neglect nutrition. They think it's not important. Oh my God, that's extremely important. So one of the steps is what are you eating? What are you putting inside of your body? Are you putting things that will promote healing or things that will promote more inflammation in your body? Yeah, that's perfectly said because uh, that is step number four in, in your book, Eight Steps to Conquer Chronic Pain, and that is Fix Your Diet. And we probably have time for that last step to kind of go over. But when it comes to uh, someone's routine of eating and what they choose to get at the grocery store, what they choose to put in their body. What are some of the common issues that you see with your patients over the years? Because I know everyone's body is different, but what are some of the common threads uh, that you see as an issue with some of your patients? Yes. Um, so, for example, we know that there is there are types of foods that they are pro-inflammation. They they cause more inflammation in our body and other kinds of nutrients and foods that are anti-inflammatory. So I am a big proponent of an anti-inflammatory diet. And I do have a video on my channel that I explain what is that. And in the book, I also talk about that. Actually, my book has a lot of QR codes that link to my videos. So why do we need an anti-inflammatory diet? It's because a lot of uh, chronic pains, we now know that they are caused by a, a chronic inflammation, a very low-grade inflammation. One of these diseases, you probably heard about it, is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a slow-grade uh, destruction of the cartilage. The cartilage is the, the, mem the cushion between our bones, and people who have osteoarthritis, that cartilage is kind of lost over the years. And we know that um, if a person eats uh, nutrients that are pro-inflammatory, they accelerate this osteoarthritis. We now think also that fibromyalgia is a chronic inflammation in the brain that is also sensitizing the brain. So what are the foods that are pro-inflammatory? Sugars, a lot. Uh, unhealthy fats, like trans fats. So this means processed food. <laughs> Guess what processed food is made of? Basically, sugars and unhealthy fats. So you have to eat the opposite. You have to eliminate the sugars. You have to eliminate this unhealthy fat and eat more what we call the um, healthy fats like omega-3s, omega-6. Those are essential fatty acids that we need to put in our body. And um, those are things like fish, nuts, um, flax seeds, some kinds of oils, extra virgin olive oil, and uh, many other things that I, I don't remember all of them right now. But um, so just cutting on unhealthy processed food and eating more vegetables, fruits, fish, or nuts and, you know, dark green vegetables, eggs, that's, that, that in itself is medicine. You know, uh, food is medicine and food can be poison too. So it doesn't need to be sophisticated diet. It doesn't need to be any, you know, uh, complex, complicated diet. It's just eating healthy and stop eating junk. <laughs> Man, that is perfectly well said. And for those who are listening right now, listen on Reforx Radio, talking to our guest today, Dr. Andrea Furlan. And when people have the opportunity to check out your book, Eight Steps to Conquer Chronic Pain, A Doctor's Guide to a Lifelong Relief, what's a great place that they can find you on social media or website if they want to dive even deeper? Because I know you have a YouTube channel we've been talking about, but what's some other yeah. places they can visit? Yeah. Uh, so my books can be found anywhere where books are sold, online or in bookstores or in indie bookstores, your local bookstores. You can ask them to bring the book. And if you have a list, uh, if you want to have a list of this, the links, you can go to my website 
is www.drdoctorandreafurlan.com slash book. And then you have a list of the major bookstores where you can find my book. Well, once again, we want to thank our special guest, Dr. Andrea Furlan, for taking time talking to us today about your awesome book that people should be getting. I mean, get it for yourself and a friend, Eight Steps to Conquer Chronic Pain, A Doctor's Guide to Lifelong Relief. We want to say thank you for your time and also for your expertise. Thank you very much for inviting me.